Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to My Neighbor Zuckerberg. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of My Neighbor Zuckerberg. I'm host number one, Munaf Kapadia. I'm the chief eating officer of the Bori Kitchen. I'm host number two, Nabil Merchant. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Fixie. At my neighbor Zuckerberg, we try and invite guests who are very, very, very ordinary. But something about these guys makes them extraordinary. It's their stories, stories of adventure, of courage. These are stories of entrepreneurship. One of these are guys you probably might have missed while jogging on Cart Road. Or these are the guys that you possibly have pulled an Uber ride with. Or they could also be your neighbor. And hence the inspiration behind the name of the show, my neighbor Zuckerberg. Now today we are incredibly excited uh, to say that our show is power packed. No, it's power packed <laughs> because we have the founder of one of the coolest and sexiest uh, food startups right here in Bandra, Mr. Rohan Manglorkar, the founder of Packapow. Hey, Rohan, what's up? Hey, what's happening? So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about Rohan. His uh, food startup, Pack a Pow, okay, makes these amazing pows filled with uh, interesting uh, uh, fillings in it. So there's something called Kima Pow, then there's Dabeli, but now Rohan has another list of at least 10 to 12 different delicacies in what he can stuff into a pow. And, and that's really amazing because it's, it's so easy to eat and so tasty. Rohan, go for it. Like, tell us more about this inspiration and how this came into being. So Packapa started in uh, 2014 November. Uh, the whole idea was I was traveling in the Andamans, and okay. I saw this uh, bow floating. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was just sitting in a shack, and I saw this Punjabi uncle who was around 60, 65 years old, uh, and he was making his own breads and serving people, and he was going on every table and taking the orders. So I was like, and I always wanted to get into the food space. So that's when I came back from the Andamans and uh, I was just talking at home and we were deciding what to do in the food space. And my parents were very against it is because uh, I am from the printing background. Uh, and then from that, I opened another, we launched a website with four friends called Prop Shop 24. Okay. And then again, I wasn't really enjoying that. So okay. that's the time when I realized that food is what I love to do. And uh, like, that's where I belong. So near a shack at the Andaman uh, Islands, uh, you saw this particular gentleman yeah. serving uh, something in the in the traditional. Uh, so no, pow. he wasn't. No, he wasn't serving anything in a traditional pow. Okay. It's just the vibe that he was serving food mm. in and the way he was running his restaurant. Okay, that's what inspired me. And then maybe just seeing the guy happy. Yeah, and, and just seeing him happy. You know, he was just coming on every table, talking to people, interacting with people, and he was just in shorts and a ganji. He didn't really have to wear a chef jacket. Okay, so the whole vibe at. Uh, this place in, in the Andaman was the inspiration for uh, uh, creating a food startup and yeah. hence uh, pack a pow. Yeah, so we we got back, I came back from the Andamans and right. five days later there was an event that was happening at the Woodhouse Gym Khan. It was called the Tap Beer Festival. The Tap Beer Festival. Festival. Okay. And I also realized that that's the space where I can actually take my food out there, make 800,000 people try it and get a feedback. Okay. Uh, and they actually paid me they were to paying get, customers. Yeah, they were paying me and then I was getting a feedback. Right. Uh, yeah, from there on, we just started doing pop-ups. Midday called us the next day, immediately after the Tap Beer Festival. Okay. Uh, they came over home, they did a food, they did a proper tasting. Right. And then on Sunday, midday, we had like a whole article about what pack pow is and the whole idea about pack pow Lovely. I want to dive deeper into uh, the, the Yeah, into the whole, uh, the concept of, so uh, it's called a Ladi pow, right? Yeah, I mean, it is a Ladi pow. It's a Ladi pow. And, uh, you know, you, you cut the Ladi pow you know, half open. Yeah. And uh, you have some really interesting uh, stuffings uh, of of non-veg sauces and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and in which you actually create your, you know, recipes the and, and the product. Yes. Yeah. Where did the inspiration of using a ladi pow to create, you know, these kind of delicacies? I mean, uh, what, what was going through your head? Because, I mean, it could have been anything. It could have so, been a role. It could be multiple things. Yeah. So, the whole idea was not to do what someone's already doing. Right. Uh, so, you have your... Guys who do Sharmas, Frankies, right. your Hangla rolls right now. Mm -hmm. So everyone's getting into the same space. You know, you get your butter chicken roll at 3 o'clock in the morning. and it's, mini Punjab, yeah. yeah you, <laughs> it's the same thing everywhere. So 
we decided that you know let's just get local okay and let's serve something which is more interesting and not the mayonnaise base not the cream base so we took something like the hunkard uh, okay. and we use that that's actually one of the most expensive product in pakapao mm-hmm. okay the hunkard uh, okay so that's where we we realized and it really tastes good when we put everything together so when you're eating a pakapao it's actually the hunkard dip which is on top which is cold mm-hmm. and fried onions which is crunchy Wow, fantastic! Yeah. Nice. So the whole idea was that we do something different and not the same, or just put like an amul cheese or just put yeah. stuff like that. So we thought let's just be different. So the pow goes with almost everything that you uh, decide to create. So it could be possibly a Mexican stuffing, or it could be. Uh, how many times have you tried to you know so experiment with the stuffings within so the, the pow? So the it's been pow. almost three years now, and we've we've been playing around every day. So anything that comes in at the next day, we go to the kitchen and we try doing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we realize that we don't want to try too hard. So right. we try to follow the tips Frankie model, where he's got his best mutton Frankie with egg. Yeah. That's our best mutton shami pow with the hunkered basil dip, fried onions, and the red garlic paste. So on the first day only we said let's not do a keema pow because keema pow is too common. Correct. So we made a mutton shami which we marinate for six hours. Like that's the favorite in pack a pow. Okay. So people really like. I have people coming down from New Bombay from D Y Patel College. I have kids coming on a Sunday. Just to eat back up and then drive back to DY Patel. So lovely, we've kept lovely. it very simple. Wow. We've not tried to experiment. So when we started Papa's, we did only three dishes. That was a mutton shami, the herb chicken, and a mm. veg, the paneer and cheese. Okay. So for almost six seven months, we didn't experiment at all. We just said, let's get this perfect. Let's get people used to this. And what we've realized that people have started getting used to the taste. That's why we get repeat customers. Wow. Yeah. Consistency. The yeah. So we just we didn't want to experiment at all. We okay. said, let's just go open with three. Let's see what it is. So for six, eight months, we didn't, we didn't even go to the kitchen and say, okay, let's try something new. Okay. Nice, nice, very nice. So, But now we have like nine products in the shop. That's awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. So yeah. uh, t- tell me more about, uh, you know, st- I we've heard that you launched your uh, first uh, outlet, I would say, yeah. in, in in the QSR format that we're talking about in uh, in Bandra. Any reason as to why it took? You know, approximately eighteen to twenty-four months to launch your first uh, QSR outlet. So I'm not from the food space. Okay. So the industry is like it's crazy. So every okay. second day there's something new opening. Every day there's something that is opening in the street food or a salad place or mm-hmm. a fan dining. So it's just I didn't want to get into that space where street go say I want to book a place for fifty thousand rupees mm-hmm. or sixty thousand rupees. So the idea was to run the product. Get a whole database of people liking the food. Uh, so then, what people started inviting them, like they started inviting us to their house. So we were doing caterings for like thirty, forty people. We even done caterings for five people. So the whole idea was my my point was that more and more people eating my product and talking about it was the idea. It wasn't about selling five hundred or thousand or opening ten outlets. And everyone was like, you know, it's it's a great model. It's yeah. simple. You can just Become Scale the next. Yeah, you, you can just to. be the next tips rank and open ten. Go to Chennai. Go to Delhi. So the idea was not to do that. And and as someone who is trying to be in the food space myself, one of the things I noticed about Rohan right up front when when we uh, collaborated and we did that pop up yeah. at Little Flea, Little Flea. is uh, he's been very very patient with Paka Pow. He's mm-hmm. done it very peacefully. He's done it. On the ground, you know, every single pop up, every single uh, stall that he set up, he went out there. He was the face. Uh, he got feedback from customers right out there. He never got impatient about pack up power at all. And I think the same thing is reflecting now in your uh, shop format as well in your yeah. retail. Yeah. So format. again, like it's been eight months. We opened in April two thousand sixteen, and it's been around eight months. And we get calls saying that you know, scale, scale, open one in Andheri, open one in Maim, open one in town. And we just, I, I'm just listening to people. So the industry, everybody wants to give their feedback, so talk to you, encourage you. Hmm. But I don't want to be, uh, like you said, you're, like I, I don't want to be called a QSR. Hmm. That's the okay. whole idea. I don't want to be a Subway. I don't want to be a McDonald's. I don't want to be a, a Carter's Blue or a Tips Frankie. I don't want to do that. The idea is that we're catering to a niche market. We charge hundred and ten bucks for a herb chicken seek, and we charge one thirty for a mutton shami. Hmm. Uh, where even a rickshaw guy can come and eat it, or even a normal person can come and eat it. But we have a very, very different crowd, especially in Bandra right now. Okay. So the idea is not. So if someone tells me where's your next place that you yeah. want to open a backup, I want to open it in the Andamans. 
<laughs> so it's like that, you know. Like even it, it should be like that. The product is that I want to travel to the Andamans or take it on a wear a ganji. Or no, it's, I can I still wear shorts and uh, <laughs> piece. I don't have a body to wear a ganji right now. <laughs> so here's what I'm getting. Uh, you're taking your time. Yeah. You've uh, experimented enough with the products, and you've launched your first outlet in Bandra. You do not want to be compared to a Tips, a Subway, or a McDonald's. So. in the future i mean obviously the journey is going to get a lot more interesting hectic you know all agitated yeah. you can possibly be is there a fear of of uh, someone coming and eating into your space like like who's your real competition if if i had to just you know single it out so, how would it work in the food space because there's so many brands yeah. right and and at the same price point so what how do you go about so what we did is distribution uh, yourself That's an interesting question. So I was sitting with the owner of Bar Stock Exchange. We actually did a pop up with them. Okay. Uh, and we called it the Power Exchange. Okay. So the idea again here is to collaborate with restaurants or bars because it's a very bar product. It's a snack which goes well with a beer Correct. or a drink. So I sat with him, and my first question was when I saw that Kamla Mills place, and right? It was he's opening back to back, and I was like, "Who's your competition?" And he's like, "No one's my competition." So what I feel like in the food space, if you're focused on what you're doing and you're not seeing what others are doing, is where you can reach to what you want to do. So right. what I see in pop-ups right now, it's saturated. Like everyone <coughs> wants to do something where they think it's easy to do it, mm-hmm. or just call up the organizer and say, okay, you know what, my mum makes like something really interesting. Let me do it. So what they're trying to do is they're not trying to like just understand. Okay, let me create a product out of it. Let me not just say my mom makes the best Hindi curry, so I have to put it in a box and sell it, because that's not a product. You need to make a product, wait for about a year, and then go out wow. in the market and do it. Okay. okay. So no one's really my competition. I'm not. I'm not really worried if someone really does something inside a pow. Yeah, I do get insecure at points, but I mean that's how the industry is, right? You go like there are about thirty places in Bandra where you get butter chicken rolls. Right. But then you know which one to pick up, and you know which one you really like and want to go and eat. Okay, uh, Rohan, a couple of more uh, detailed questions, you know, uh, because uh, a lot of uh, people are going to be listening to this, and, and they uh, are uh, they're going to be re- really inspired by what you what you have to say today. Uh, a lot of budding food entrepreneurs, and they really would be interested in knowing how a person from a non food background has managed to build a strong uh, food brand. How do you go about doing the operations? Like, what are the benchmarks? What What are the various costs that are taken into consideration? How do you manage to keep your costs at a certain level? Uh, how do you account for wastages? Can you, if you could just throw, throw some light on that, it would be really interesting. So we really struggled the first six months because obviously we didn't know that there's something even called a food cost. Okay. We only knew that okay, we have to buy this much, <laughs> right. we have to sell this much, and this is how much you make money at the end. Yeah. So if you spend fifty thousand in the market and in your packaging and everything. and you make 1 lakh that means 50000 is your profit so we never went and said okay fine 30% is food cost 20% is packaging cost so 2% is something like that we never did that okay so then slowly slowly we understand and we met people then we went through we didn't go through a consultant but a, a friend helped me to get someone who's uh, basically uh, work out the whole food cost for me so we sat one day in the kitchen and uh, it was measured to the key like how much salt was put in a mutton shami how much uh, the weight of how many spring onions went in the hunker dip and i was just like how do you get this accurate like how do i still was not understanding the formula but then when it came to me i exactly knew that okay fine 35 rupees is just the mutton patty cost mm. then you have 3 rupees your pow cost then you have your paper plates you have your tissues you have your electricity you have everything so that's how we broke it down and then now we know exactly that okay Thirty percent is our food cost. Uh, logistics is this much, so that's how it went. It it you can't do it unless you like people usually what they do they get a consultant, hmm. right? But till date we've I've met one consultant because I wanted to do another product. I was excited because this was doing well, so I was like I want to do another product which is in my mind, which I will do soon, not now, but I want to m- make sure that Packer Power is at its place and then get a new brand. Okay. So that's the time when I realized that you don't need a consultant. You don't mm. need a food consultant, especially in what I'm doing. Right. Uh, there are a lot of restauranters who get food consultant because they're obviously doing larger scales. They're opening ten, twelve in like two years, so they need a better team and stuff like that. Okay. So with me, I've never really uh, got a food consultant on board or stuff like. Just friends in the industry that have, has helped me, and yeah. 
but for everyone else out there and there are a lot of aspiring food entrepreneurs out there especially lately i think the biggest takeaway from what rohan said is ask for help yeah. and feel free to ask people in the industry for help because for whatever reason this industry is very helpful people are always out there to give you advice but ultimately even after all that advice you need like rohan needed that 6 months of data yeah. to be able to sit down and be like hey this is how much it's going to cost so uh, i don't think there's any easy way out of it where from day 1 you will know what your food cost is i mean what with what munaf is saying about going out and getting people helping yeah but don't push your luck by just going hmm. you know going out of your way or calling up a restaurant or you've met him it's fine he must be he must be owning 10 restaurants in bombay but if you don't do it yourself you're not going to learn what's right. the use of he calling you up or you calling up and saying that can i get a packaging guy's number find it yourself meet him understand what he's doing new you're getting your hands dirty just you getting your hands dirty you have to do it otherwise you're not going to i mean in this industry no one's going to help you yes they do but they're not going to tell you like okay fine you know like today if i called up someone if someone calls me up and says how many plates would you sell at a little free and i would be like okay fine i sell 1200 plates so that person knows okay the break up but the, no one in the industry will come and tell you okay you know baba you do 300 plates today and then 400 plates on saturday and sunday will be more crowds you do 600 plates no one does that when you do your first flea market is when you know that okay fine on the first day you did this yeah. much let me prep for more then let me prep for more so you understand demand from, supply yeah exactly yeah the industry is there to help you but i mean i prefer not going out and talking to too many people or asking them for help just basic help yeah i do that but not like going into people's faces like, help, help me, me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. that's awesome and yeah. how do you think uh, uh, i think technology and uh, you know social media pretty much has played a really uh, important role for a lot of entrepreneurs out there so yeah. how would you attribute your uh, how 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 have you used technology to help uh, so our scale full, up what have you done our full brand is through social media like whether it's facebook whether it's instagram or influencers posting about us okay and stuff for like that so when we and obviously the press that helped us get a couple of articles and push us to do it Right. But I haven't done um, I haven't done a paid Facebook ad yet. I've not done uh, till now. It's till I have the shop. I've never done flyers, so I wow. don't believe in the whole flyer model. You're not I, on a single flyer. I haven't done one single flyer. Wow. Uh, I made a I mean I made a quirky invitation uh, where I send a couple of friends and influencers uh, where it, the card open and yeah, the yeah, shop yeah. opened. So the card was the shop. Where if hmm. you open the card, it was like an Archie's card where you open and like nice. a nice. pop up the shop open. And in a box, we sent two pows without any filling, and we wrote out there that on 15th April we open. Please come get your filling. Mm. Ah, so we just nice. sent plain pows. So this is really, outside. it was yeah. impactful, no? Yeah. But so that really yeah. helped us. So I go, I mean, very organic. I don't like doing the flyer. So it's today actually we've put a sign outside the lane saying that pack a pow is your. <laughs> Till there was nothing. For eight months we didn't put a sign. Today we put a sign saying that we are your. Nice, nice, nice. 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 Um, and on this note, uh, let's take a break. and also i think there are some pows waiting for us outside let's grab them and we'll be right back did you know that some termites in africa have a pleasantly minty flavor did you know that india's largest music festival was in a way conceptualized in estonia did you know that the awesomest chips in the world are found only inside us prisons hello i'm chuck i'm shrikeet and i'm naren and together we are simplified a podcast that helps you appear smarter to an audience that knows no different or give you some stuff to talk about at parties we are ultra crepidarians and if you don't know what that means then tune in to simplified with a b on itunes audio boom or your favorite podcasting app episodes out every fortnight okay guys we are back from the break rohan give us a crash course on starting our own food venture uh, so yeah firstly you uh, understand what you want to do So I'll tell you what I did. I basically sat and I wrote down ten of my mum's best dishes, and that's when we realized that okay, instead of putting the mutton shami in a romali roti or in a roll, we said let's get local and get a pow. So I think you can sit down, just understand what you like to eat firstly. Okay. okay. So I like street food, so that's why I wanted to get into the street food space. Okay. So okay. like there are a lot of friends of mine who just want to say like okay, let's open a bar. Hmm. I mean, it's not easy to open a bar. Yeah, I mean, a yeah. hundred. You must be having a lot of money stuff. in your bank account, but it's not easy to open a bar. You have your licenses, you have your cops, you have your BMC, you have thousand other things. So first, don't jump into things that look damn good, and you may yeah. just be cool by owning a bar, but you're not cool owning a bar because they go through shit loads of stress. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So think first what you want to do. Understand the product. Think if it's really going to sell out in the market, and then. 
I would say don't even invite your friends or your family home uh, and do a tasting. A lot of people do that, which is which is fair. But what I did is that I made only three people eat it, and we went straight to the pop up, and we made eight hundred people eat it. Wow! Wow! Okay. And that's when we realized that okay, fine, you know, the hunger could be improved, or uh, we never toasted the pow. So oh, we got okay. feedback saying toast the pow. Then the mm. next pop up, we started toasting the pow. People started liking it. Loving it. it yeah. So. That feedback that you get, you need to work on it. No, you can't just say, "Huh, okay, fine." I can even toast it on the tawa. It doesn't stay as crispy on a tawa than you make it on a toaster. So, fantastic! You focus on the product. You identify ten of your mother's recipes. But do you think the first way to get your food product into the market is, is the pop up the right route of doing it? Right uh, I got it? lucky by doing the pop up. Right now, it's saturated. Like right now, it's a market where every everybody wants to do it or things that okay, you know, let's go there have fun. Yeah. Or you can have fun, but don't try on eating on someone else's pro- product. You know. Hmm. Like I'll give you an example. So there are these friends of mine. They do these tornado sticks. They do the the tornado sticks, the potato, oh, potato sticks. sticks. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, and I think they're doing an amazing job. They've got the right seasoning. They they do it for fun. uh they're not really coming and doing competition to someone who's doing french fries and they stuck to a product right so their product was stick house where they stuck to everything on a stick okay then they realized that their market is for kids and birthday parties and stuff so they only said okay let me do like zucchini sticks and potato sticks and they got amazing toppings hmm. okay or oh, that's about it huh that's it that's that's their model and i think that's so scale like that can be scale you can go to cinemas you can go to like a PDRs, uh, yeah, you can do SL man. World. You yeah. can do it anywhere. Then someone else starts it. Someone else starts it, and I just think that you can you you can do it. It's not like you cannot do it. There's competition for everyone. If you're doing it, then at least do it properly. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, the product is not good. Then what's the use? Right. Specialize in it. Yeah. So so step one is uh, you know focus on on uh, what you think you like. Yeah. And what do you think will sell? Like, think what think is lacking in the city? What's lacking in the city? Exactly. Right, and then uh, from there, uh, you know, take a small uh, a group, a small cluster, and uh, get some feedback yeah. from yeah. your friends and family. And Maybe the smaller the better. The smaller the better. Smaller the better. Especially when you're not from the food space. If you're from the food space, then you can go and open a 700 square feet. Right, because you have a you have a brand, you have a name behind you. Yeah. But at least if you're starting off with nothing. as yeah. credibility maybe you can just start with that and then immediately see the next opportunity where you can actually serve this to maybe 150 to 200 people yeah. right and, and then pop-ups get are a good yeah. way pop-ups yeah that. pop-ups is a good way but like i said it's saturated you need to do it the right way nice, or nice. select the right pop-ups to do we'll just jump nice. in yeah so there, there are various uh, such uh, you know products i would say technology products in the market that also help you uh, launch your uh, you know food brand after you've got your uh, initial recipe right yeah. so you know while we were browsing we were checking that uh, there are companies like lime tree hmm. that allows you to uh, put up your website you know allows you to even create an app for your uh, food brand uh, sort out sorts out your entire inventory management system also sorts out the fact that there are so many aggregators like yeah. zomato swiggy scootsy and it brings everything in one consolidated platform how is this you know new uh, you know wave of 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 companies that are trying to serve restaurants and and, and food startups how is that making a difference in people's life like so, would you recommend uh, an entrepreneur yeah 101% 101% percent. i think they're amazing uh, again you need to figure out the percentage that they give you and the stuff basically you want your product to go package well mm-hmm. and reach the other person well that's what uh, i think zomato scootsy swiggy you don't really know if people are enjoying the food till you don't get a review right today i know that even if i have to call up 1000 people uh, i will call them up and if i don't call them tomorrow i'll call them after 10 days and ask them you know did you enjoy yeah. your product i mean i can't talk to the customer who's eating my food right now because they're ordering from scootsy swiggy and they don't give you a database mm-hmm. but my point is that i don't mind hiring one person just sitting there on the phone and calling everybody not immediately but calling everyone just getting a feedback because that's the most important more important thing. Yeah. right so yeah. are we saying that in today's day and age it just become a lot more uh, a easier and hence more accessible a lot to a lot of people to actually start yeah. a food brand so it's become it's obviously become we used to have around 150 people coming to the store when we started okay now we have around 80 people 80 90 people coming to the store wow so everyone wants but it all everyone the... wants it at oh. home wow. but like if i meet someone like i met someone at the pop up yesterday and they said no we keep i said have you eaten the product before and he's like we keep eating it from swiggy 
right but i don't know who you are yeah. have you enjoyed your product <laughs> right. there's no interaction with hmm. so that's what is missing but i think it's amazing to hit your numbers so it's amazing okay yeah and it's again become that whole number game only so right so so then uh, here's a question right dark kitchen format hmm. so for listeners uh, there is this new wave of food startups that have come up where instead of having a shop front you can actually have something called a dark kitchen where uh, food is directly delivered to someone's place yeah. and someone not not necessarily needs to visit you know your shop front or your store front yeah. so then do you think the the you know taking pack a pow and adding a lot of dark kitchens in various areas would be a smarter thing to do versus having a shop front in in different places i mean how uh, does that work out now no i wouldn't i wouldn't do that so i would open more retail stores okay uh, but uh, like in my mind so we are a hole in a wall in bandra right right there's there's no visibility to the store right right so we are actually a dark kitchen if you go to in, see, in a way in a sort of detail yeah kitchen. like a dark retail kitchen but we created a buzz around the product so we have people coming in there okay. like today for lunch we had around 25 people coming for lunch so we do have people coming in but if i was at a linking road or at a cart road or in a kolaba or uh, the main roads we would hit numbers which is crazy like i know it for sure we would hit numbers we would do almost 300 400 plates a day footfalls would be uh, yeah. yeah because there's footfall oh. so my next my next step would be paying a little more rent and uh, getting the product there to more people but i i don't think so i'll go in the whole delivery model because again i'm very against not knowing who's eating my food right yeah so how long does it take to prepare a quick uh, so i'm ordering a uh so if you are if, if we do around say 10 pows in like about 10 12 minutes wow yeah so you can actually dish out pow. approximately a good 50 60 pows in an hour yeah or is really efficient man is really a pack up a factory one day journey <laughs> uh, one hey, so uh, rohan i was just thinking for you the single most important thing is controlling the entire experience yeah. of consuming that pow which is why delivery is something that's not very attractive yeah. for you because you can't control that yeah. part so today something very simple the the restaurants and bars opening when night like the owners are standing there making yeah. sure that everything is fine it has never been done in a street food model like you don't know who owns your tips franky you don't mm. know who owns your uh, subways or subways whatever. and yeah. stuff like that right? right or carters blue carters blue is just expanding every sec- second day they're opening a new outlet yeah. but there's not a niche street food product in bombay which i feel whether it's delivery there's no street mm. food where you can actually go there and say there's bade mia mm. so i would compare myself like i would i would say that okay my vision is to be the next bade mia where people talk about the food where people especially coming down from delhi say oh this guy has the best mutton shami we do get the best mutton shami in delhi but this guy in bombay does the best mutton shami so we're trying to do that more than saying that you know let's Numbers. sell 500 pack up house a day mm. so for you scale is more about identity and impact as yeah. opposed to numbers Will that ever change? Uh, I hope it doesn't change. Yeah, <laughs> good answer. Yeah. So, where's the future of Packabow? So, I mean, like, let's l- assume that uh, I mean, we've got you know for the year two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, you know, next financial year. What what do you have planned for Packabow? So, right now we've we've got one store. Okay. Uh, it's been a crazy season because our product is very catering product. It's like. uh people call us for live counters so we do like parties where it starts at 9 in the night and goes on till 9 in the morning oh my god okay. yeah so it's it's a very after party product it's a very drinking product so we've done a wedding in uh pune where people have invited us to the jw marriott where the hotel actually allowed us to come in and you, they don't allow you to do outside catering oh that's catering. commendable that's very commendable so they got us in we did two counters uh, one after party one sangeet so i prefer doing those kind of Uh, that's my scalability the number of caterings that i get hmm. is what i enjoy doing more is again because i'm talking one on one with the client i know whether the guests are enjoying the food not enjoying the food so that's where i'm enjoying stuff like that and i don't want like i said i don't want to open say 10 pack up house in 2 years i'm going to go the way it's going right now i'm really happy with the amount of caterings we do the number of pop ups we're doing every weekend we're doing a catering so whether they are 20 people whether 50 people so the full season is been like that so we we actually enjoying it so right now we've not decided to open store number 2 okay but the plan is to open store number 2 we've got offered uh, places like again in people have called us to come to goa uh, people have told us to come to pune but we've not spoken about anything we've just been taking it very easy and 
we're just waiting for the right time yeah interesting where do you see uh, packer power in the next uh, i know this is going to be a a long timeline but yeah. in the next uh, you know 3 to 5 years like where would you like to see yeah packer? where would you like to see packer power the what's Andamans. your ideal scenario the andamans with a ganji <laughs> yeah uh, with a packer power ganji <laughs> yeah the andamans will be great i have got a lot of friends so uh, so i love doing pop ups the best pop up that i really want to do is the baro market in london like oh. i want to take my product there to baro nice. market london that'll be fun or new york no they are yeah but, i mean but yeah. like i've been to baro market in london and it's am- it's an amazing vibe where people really come out there to eat the food and they appreciate it so hmm. that that i think would be my next pop up which i would really want to do i, I can totally see it happening man yeah. you know, you know, really, this will happen very <coughs> fast yeah you know what i really love about rohan he just enjoys what he does you yeah. know he's he's not interested in the and the scale or the great numbers or you know it's it just enjoying like even it, when we just asked him that you know history to five year vision like it's not about being in like 15 20 cities but being you know at the baro market in london so with this we'll uh, end our session with ron mangalkar the founder of packapau it was an amazing session that we have today so this is a very was, appetizing session oh yeah very appetizing thank session you. thank you thank you so much ron thanks So guys please please do visit the Packapau uh, shop front or I would say the restaurant uh, the hole in the wall the hole in the wall hole in Bandra West right. it's uh, near a school called Learners it, Academy it's a pow in the wall it's a pow yeah. in the wall yeah, yeah. It's a pow in the wall <laughs> so it's next to Learners Academy or your next landmark would also be close to Candies the iconic candies in Bandra West but I think it will be you know I think Packapau will now become a landmark you know you know where Packapau is that's where you'll start finding anyone else location hopefully So also do uh, catch uh, f- do find uh, Packapau on Facebook that's facebook.com/packapau Instagram and Twitter Instagram and Twitter absolutely Thank you guys That was an episode of My Neighbor Zuckerberg brought to you by Indus Vox Media and Media Partners Inc 42 Hey man <laughs> just help me out man I need some I need some podcast man I haven't had a fix in a week just need some Don't you worry about it. I got podcast galore for you, man. Just go to ivmpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, man. I'm going to check it out.